Do you ever think about how cool it would be to spend a little time with Jesus? I mean, he was an incredible person. I mean, number one, he only lived to be 33. And he basically spent the last three years of his life teaching and doing demons and curing people. He had no possessions. He didn't go very far, because all he did was walk. And he had this posse of 12 disciples that kind of hung out with him. And here we are 2,000 years later talking about this guy. And chances are, if Jesus came back today and was anything like he was back then, we'd label him as a kook and probably wonder if he was for real. Because Jesus drove people crazy. I mean, he got to people's soul. He quietly challenged people to look at the world and others with different eyes. And he took this Jewish religion that he was a part of and never, ever left, by the way, and he made it personal. He challenged people to see their religion not about rules and positions and honor, but religion was really about the way you live your life. I mean, you can be any brand you want. And you can claim to believe anything you want. But if we act like an idiot, then our religion doesn't make a difference. And that's the same challenge we have today. Jesus wants our religion, whatever label it may be, to be personal. He wants our religion to follow us out the door so that it makes a difference in what you do this afternoon and Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. I can't imagine what it was like to be Jesus because, for example, in the gospel, look at what his day was like. Well, number one, he had to go to his mother-in-law's house. And she was sick, and he cured her. Then in the evening, the whole city was gathered around, and he spent all his time curing people, casting out demons. The next morning, he gets up early to go into the woods just to be by himself, and the disciples stalk him and hunt him down and want him to come out. And all he wanted to do was kind of get refurbished a little bit. And I think Jesus is kind of saying, okay, I'm not going to be here forever. And when I leave, which won't be long, then the torch is passed unto you. I'm not going to be here. I'm going to live inside the heart and soul of who you are. And now you need to cast out the demons and help heal people and share the good news. I thought a lot about Jesus yesterday and about religion, about you and the church and who we are. I had a moderately awkward funeral. Most of my funerals seem to be awkward lately. The gentleman who passed away was fairly young, just past 60. And as usual, when I don't know the person, I call the family. I call the sons, the daughters, whoever, and just talk to them about their loved one and try to find out so I can make the service personal. I talked to the sons, and it's like neither one of them wanted to talk to me. And I said, just because you tell me something doesn't mean I'll use it. I just want to know a little bit about your dad. So I get to the funeral home, I'm a little confused, and I, his mom is there. And I said, can you tell me a few things about your son? And she says, I can't talk about that. So I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do? I'm in the coffee room just before the service starts, and the, uh, this lady who is a friend of the family comes up to me and says, Father, <laughs> what parish are you from? And I said, well, I'm the pastor of All Saints Lutheran Church. And she says, oh, I didn't know they were going to go Lutheran for the funeral. <laughs> and I said, well, I'm becoming more Catholic as time goes on, so I think we'll be okay. <laughs> and so just to test the water, at the beginning of the service, I said, let us begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And the room is packed. And I am not exaggerating. Every person in that room crossed themselves. Every single person. And so when it's time for my meditation, I stand at that little pulpit at Colonial Chapel, and I say, you know something, folks? I've been doing funerals for 44 years. And to be really honest right now, I do not know what to say. I said, I can say all the proper words, I guess, but I don't know what to say that's going to make a difference to you. And so I told him, I said, you know, each one of you comes in here with a journey. And each one of you's relationship to the deceased is different and unique. 
My guess is there's some unfinished business, as there always is. Things you wish you would have said. Things you wish you would have done. Maybe being able to see the grandkids grow up. But you know something, in the middle of all that, Jesus was a gentle soul. And Jesus was a loving and accepting soul. And now Jim is with Jesus. And Jesus is with him. And I said, I think I'm the only Lutheran in the room. But today, at this funeral, it's not about religion. It's about life and acceptance <clears throat> and the invitation to move on. That's why we're here. So as I'm walking out, a little flustered, this little old lady comes up to me and points. And she says, Father, is it okay if I call you Father? And I said, I've been called worse. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and she said, by the way, for a priest who doesn't know what to say, you did a pretty good job. <laughs> And I said, thank God. <laughs> so I'm about to get into my truck, and this guy with a very serious Irish brogue comes up to me. And he says, Reverend, you know Lee Miller. And I said, yes, I do. I did his funeral. He said, aha, I knew it was you. <laughs> and he said, by the way, you also married Lee Miller's daughter. And I said, yes, I did. And he said, well, my son married the other daughter. And I said, well, who got that wedding? And he said, well, <laughs> well he said, it wasn't going to be you because I am an Irish Catholic and I'm not going to go 0 for 2 against a Lutheran minister. <laughs> so I'm just so glad to get the heck out of there. <laughs> but it was interesting because somehow, some way, just being your pastor and knowing how you are and knowing how we see religion enabled me maybe to make a small little dent in a family that really didn't want me there in the first place. You see, there are times when I don't know what to say. How about you? Are there times in your life when something happens to you or somebody you love and you just don't know what to say? So often I see how religion gets in the way of our freedom to be who we are. That religion so often gets in the way of enjoying the majestic and the beautiful and the spiritual relationship that each one of us can have with that higher power. And I, like you, so often life is unpredictable, life is unfair, and when something happens, words do not come easy. Because religion is not about what we say. Religion is about what we do and the choices we make and how we live each day. I was talking to my brother this morning. This has nothing to do with anything, but I have two more minutes to kill, so I thought I'd tell him. <laughs> my brother is a music therapist and a music professor. Same place for 36 years. And I call him every morning on my way to church on Sunday. And he says, Don, can you believe anybody that would be in the same place for 36 years? And I said, yes, Jim, you're talking to him. <laughs> and I said, Jim, how did you know it was time to retire? And he says, well, here's a test, Don. Try it this morning. He said, when you're talking to people and they nod like this up and down, keep on working. But if you're talking to people and they go like this, it's time to retire. <laughs> what about if they nod off when you sleep? He said, I ain't gonna touch that one, you know. <laughs> so yesterday, I just walked around. I went into the kitchen and there's seven guys from the Mez Club making meatballs. And I thought to myself, those meatballs will go into the sauce, we'll go to the spaghetti dinner, we'll eat them, we'll pay money, we'll raise money, and somehow those meatballs will help us be a better church. I saw a lady in the back office who was paying our bills. I saw the bin for gently used shoes. I thought of a co-worker of yours that lost everything that she had in a fire. I saw the young love bucket I saw the long list in the prayer book. I see the annual report with our budget for next year that makes those things happen that we like to do. I saw the flowers on the altar. I think of all my fumbles. And right now I don't know what to say. So I'll just say thank you and amen. Amen. If you're able to, please rise for the creed. It's on page 105. <laughs>